Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for um, allowing me to be part of uh, this wonderful uh, fomenting of a revolution and um, creating a new culture um, towards um, making our, our textiles and our fabrics, our clothes um, influenced um, by ancient cultures. Um, my talk is on microbes and microfibers, uh, biocycling textiles. I'll share a little bit of narrative uh, anchored in time. Um, and I will also share about Cyclo textiles, the technology, um, how we were inspired by biomimetic um, design, and, um, and in terms of uh, going forward, uh, what this means for us and the opportunities and the challenges. So um, uh, today is April 27th, uh, 0, 2019. Uh, zero because we are thinking in a 10,000 year time scale. Um, we do need to think about geological time scale because um, that's how, how much our impact is. Um, in terms of learning from nature, nature has had about four billion years of uh, R&D in designing new materials. And so uh, we want to incorporate that ancient time uh, that we can learn from there and design materials now and utilize them and in such a way that we are able to have a positive footprint in that next four billion years, perhaps. And so um, in this time frame, when we see cathedrals burning, churches being bombed, and also um, mosques uh, attacked, these are acute events, uh, short-term uh, short trauma, maybe even long-term, but in a short period of time, we have a lot of intense attention called to things, um, and it, um, jars our sensibility and our aesthetic. And what I'm hoping that we can also do is look at things over the long term, uh, things that take place over long time scales, but they should also jar our sensibility just like some of these acute events happen. Um, in terms of um, um, how we have arrived here, it helps to go back um, in time to the time of the Iron Age where things rusted, you know, we didn't have materials that lasted for a while. And as we learned to dope carbon and other metals, chromium, manganese, we created steels and we created stainless steels. So something that had a short finite line, time frame was able, we were able to extend their lifetime over long periods of time and stretch their life and make them um, uh, refractory to the environment. So the, in other words, they would not interact uh, with the environment in a way that they degraded. And so when we created rayons and we looked at silks and cottons and um, wool and, um, and all these um, uh, materials, when we had a chance to make uh, them artificially, make them synthetically um, in the last 100 years, we created uh, fantastic architectures. Uh, but in some ways, when it comes to them interacting that durability and tenacity and wicking and uh, water repellency, all those are fantastic properties. But when those materials interact with the environment, there is an excess overcapacity in terms of performance. And so you have now microfibers that go from our laundry machines to the wastewater treatment plants into the oceans. And so that is, and once they are in the ocean, they are now uh, have become such a huge uh, uh, threat and they are actually contributing to, um, they are being ingested by um, uh, animals and eventually that plastics are actually sequesters of chemicals and so um, that is a big known problem. Also, the other problem of textiles just ending up in um, uh, permanent incarceration in our modern pyramids of 20th century, which is landfills, there is a way uh, to introduce uh, through biomimetic design take these materials and functionality, this uh, synthetic materials, introduce life, introduce cultures, microbial cultures, and their capacity to work with materials that they have finessed over four billion years uh, to bring about changes in the properties of these synthetic materials once they meet the environment. So that's what Cyclo technology is about. Uh, we worked um, in developing and designing a biophilic polymeric formulation, biophilic, something that nature can digest, can nature can 
absorb nature can incorporate. And so um, the beauty of this uh, Ciclo textiles is that, and the technology is that during the use phase, these molecules are kind of analogous to uh, the synthetic materials, so they align themselves. They work in conjunction with synthetic materials during the use. So what we expect and what we want in terms of technical performance, we don't have any compromise on that. But the minute that they face uh, the environment, when they come into contact with moisture and the microbes, that those materials are, it's a kind of a corrosion process where microbes find the cyclo molecules, start their colonies there, and once the colony grows large enough, then they can eat the surrounding um, synthetic materials. And so that corrosion kind of process is, uh, can be applied for, for in the microfibers in the ocean, uh, where rather than the microfibers being refractory, they actually are sacrificial in the sense that these microbes can digest them, and uh, that carbon inside the, in, in this particular uh, microfibers can get incorporated into the cell wall and into the biomass of these microbes. It's very important to remember, we still need to do our recycling, we still need to do our reusing um, and uh, recovering as much. That's what we are trying to do is recovering um, what we sometimes refer to as rot. Um, and we also have to do our share of uh, refusing in terms of choosing not to use those materials. And so um, all those traditional systems of, um, of protecting our resources and doing our due diligence, our life cycle analysis um, is necessary. And so Ciclo Textiles um, allows us to bring about a change in the properties. We can find the degradation rates comparable for Ciclo Textiles to be like wool. And so um, in the same time frame as wool. Uh, one thing that we have done is we've tested our material to make sure using the Oikotex textile standard uh, to ensure that our raw materials, we disclose all our in internal, um, the, the complex formulation to ensure that there's nothing uh, harmful um, uh, in terms of, of the person who's using it as well as for the environment. And so uh, we passed the Oikotex Eco Passport standard. And similarly, um, we want to encourage um, downstream users to choose techniques like cradle to cradle certified, like uh, global organic textile standard, GOTS, and uh, blue sign, and, and uh, um, confirm to the ZDHC, zero discharge of hazardous chemicals, uh, the guidelines of the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. So all these uh, metrics that we have identified and that we've embraced are still applicable for Ciclo Textiles as well. And so um, I thank you for this opportunity um, and allowing uh, the ancient cultures um, to, uh, to change our materials and evolve our, our industrial metabolism um, to create a new kind of culture and appreciate, appreciation of these materials and appreciating life. Uh, it's really important to foster life uh, in whatever we do. So uh, I thank you for this opportunity. Namaste.